Hi everyone and welcome. In this video, I want to talk about IFRS 16 and ASPE 3065 leases. And this has been tested before in previous CFIs. So always start with the most tested topics in FR, MA, Assurance or other sections. And when you are studying IFRS, study the same section of ASPE because the chance of IFRS or ASPE is kind of 50-50 and you cannot predict that you are going to have IFRS or ASPE in your day 2 and day 3. So let's go! First of all, you have to consider if you are lessee or lessor in that case. Doesn't matter if it's day 2 case or day 3 case. At the very beginning, you have to see if you are lessee or lessor. Then you have to go through the contract lease definition and see which party has right to use the asset, which party has substantially all of the economical benefit of that specific asset and which party can direct the use of that specific asset. The other thing that you have to recognize as a lessee, not the lessor. As a lessee, you have to consider the right of use of asset and lease liability. Initial recognition and measurement of right of use of asset is cost that includes a couple of items like whatever that you have already paid, initial measurement of the lease liability, and any initial direct cost that you have to pay to close the contract and say, okay, we have a lease contract right now. And on the other side, you are going to have lease liability. Lease liability should be recognized at present value by discount rate. Under IFRS, discount rate is implicit rate. If you don't have the implicit rate, you have to use borrowing rate in your case. The lease liability includes whatever that you have paid, like the fixed amounts, or the variable amounts, even the termination penalties if it's been written in your contract and the other thing is bargain purchase option. And after that you have to recognize the subsequent measurement of right of use of asset and lease liability. Because you are going to recognize an asset in your balance sheet as lease asset, you have to amortize it. But the question is that you are going to amortize that asset based on lease term or based on useful life of the asset. If you have bargain purchase option, it means that at the very end, that asset is going to be yours. So you have to amortize it based on useful life of the asset. If there is no bargain purchase option, you have to consider the lower of lease term and useful life of the asset. That in most cases, it's going to be lease term. The other item that you have to recognize and consider is the lease term and renewable option. If you have a short term lease, like a lease that is less than 12 months or a low value lease, you have to directly expense those ones. And we don't recognize right of the use of asset and lease liability for these items. These steps were all for the lessee. What happens for the lessor under IFRS 16? For lessor, there are two types of lease, finance and operating lease. Generally, if the risk and rewards of the asset is transferred to the lessee, that is going to be finance lease. But it's not going to be really easy, especially in CV cases. It's going to be more complex and they want to complex the case and confuse you. There are four criteria under IFRS 16 that if only, only one of them is met, you are going to say, okay, this is finance lease for the lessor. And here are the criteria. Transfer of ownership or bargain purchase option at the end of the lease term. Lease term at least 75% of economic life of the asset. Present value of minimum lease payment at least 90% of fair value of lease asset. These percentages are not given in CPA Canada handbook, but we just consider it as a guideline. And again, discount rate under IFRS 16 is implicit rate. If we do not have the implicit rate in the case, we have to use incremental borrowing rate. And the last item is if the asset is specialized. Like a specific part of the airplane that's been designed and built for a specific use. That no one else can use that asset after the lease contract and lease term. And if none of these items are met, then it's going to be operating lease. But what do we do for the recognition and subsequent measurement of 
lessor. If it's a finance lease, it means that the owner of the asset is going to be lessee. So in that case, it means that lessor should de-recognize that asset and recognize and record gain and loss of the asset. Also, the other thing that should be recorded for lessor is lease receivable, which is equal to the net investment in the lease. And if the type of lease is operating, then the owner of that asset is lessor. So it's going to be really simple in that case. Lessor should keep the asset in the balance sheet no gain or loss is going to be recognized and lease income is going to be recognized on a straight line basis according to the lease term. Is it the same under ASB 3065? No, it's not the same. Under ASB 3065, you have to analyze and recognize the type of lease for both parties, lessee and lessor. But under IFRS, you have to analyze the type of the lease only, only, only for lessor. So let's see what do we have under ASB 3065. Under ASB 3065, you have to analyze and consider which party is lessee and lessor, the same as what we did under IFRS 16. There are two types of lease for lessee, capital lease and operating lease. Capital lease term and criteria is almost the same as what we had for finance lease under IFRS 16. And if one and only one of these criteria are met, then it's going to be considered as capital lease under ASB 3065. Transfer of ownership or bargain purchase option at the end of the lease term. Lease term at least 75% of economic life of the asset. Present value of minimum lease payment at least 90% of fair value of the leased asset. For the present value, we have to use discount rate and discount rate under ASB 3065 is the lower of implicit rate and incremental borrowing rate. So be careful, choose the lowest for present value calculation. And for the lessee, if none of these criteria are met, it's going to be operating lease. And for the lessor, you have to also analyze the type of the lease. I would say there are three types of lease for lessor. Sales type lease direct finance lease and operating lease. For sales type lease and direct finance lease, all these criteria should be met. Any one of the three lessee capital lease criteria met and credit risk is normal compared to the risk of collection of similar receivables, the lessor are able to reasonably estimate any amount of unreimbursable costs and if none of these criteria are met it's going to be automatically operating lease and the lessor should keep the asset on the balance sheet and measurement and subsequent measurement for the lessee if type of lease is capital there's going to be asset and liability we call it lease asset and lease liability Lease liability should be recognized at the present value of minimum lease payment, but in this amount, you shouldn't consider the executory cost. And lease asset also should be amortized according to the expected period, and lease asset should be amortized based on the expected period. And whenever that you pay anything to the lessee, there is going to be a reduction for the liability. And if you have operating lease, so in that case, there is not going to be any asset or liability on the balance sheet. And it's going to be simply rent expense in the income statement. And what happens for lessor? So I already told that there are three types of lease for lessor. Sales type, direct finance, and operating lease. Operating lease is really simple. It's going to be rental revenue that should be recognized in the income statement. But let's talk a bit about the sales type and direct finance lease. For the sales type lease, lessor should recognize initial profit or loss of the sale of asset. Because in this type of the lease, lessor is not going to be owner of that asset. And any initial direct cost should be expensed at the very beginning of the lease. There may be some unearned financing income which is deferred and it's going to be recognized 
over the lease term contract. And for direct finance lease, there is a finance income, which is all minimum lease payment, less any executory cost, plus any on guaranteed residual value minus carrying value. You don't need to memorize all these items. You should know where they are located in the CPA Canada handbook and it's going to be really easy. And again, any initial direct cost should be expensed as they incurred. So as you see, there are a lot of differences between IFRS 16 and ASB 3065 between lessee and lessor and type of lease. It seems simple, but it has more details that you have to consider those ones in your analysis, like amortization of the asset and if there is Bergen purchase option. It can be a tricky part that because we are located in the exam environment, because we have a stress, we may forget it and do not analyze properly the case. So we are not done by IFRS 16 and ASPE 3065. There are more details that have been tested in previous CV and they are very, very important because those ones have been tested in day two that you have to analyze it very deep to get C. I appreciate if you like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already. Again, what I'm doing is all to help you to pass CV in your first attempt. Thanks for watching and practice, practice, practice. Do not give up and practice under exam condition and smartly. See you in the next video.